at the time the suit was filed, Topeka was uh, partially integrated. There were integrated neighborhoods, there were integrated high schools, integrated junior high schools. The only schools in town that were not integrated were the elementary schools. And this was the reason the suit was instigated because of the elementary schools being segregated. The neighborhoods of Topeka at that time were integrated. In fact, I lived in an integrated neighborhood. I played with children uh, that were Spanish American. I played with children that were white, uh, children that were Indian and black children in my neighborhood. I was a very young child when I started walking to school. I remember the walk as being very long at that time. In fact, it was several blocks up through railroad yards and crossing a busy avenue and standing on the corner and waiting for the school bus to carry me two miles across town to an all black school. Being a young child, uh, when I first started the walk, it was very frightening to me. Um, and then when winter time came, it was a very cold walk. I remember that. I remember uh, walking, tears freezing up on my face because I began to cry because it was so cold. And many times I had to turn around and run back home. Did you walk by yourself on those days? I walked part of the way by myself and then other children joined me as I got near the avenue. Uh, other children, other black children of the neighborhood joined me and we all waited on the avenue for the bus. My father was like a lot of other black parents here in Topeka at that time. They were concerned not about the quality of education that their children were receiving. They were concerned about the amount or uh, distance that the child had to go to receive an education. Uh, my father, believed very much in right, and he felt that it was wrong for black people to have to accept second-class citizenship, and that meant being segregated in their schools, when in fact there were schools right in their neighborhood that they could attend, and they had to go clear across town to attend an all-black school. And this is one of the reasons that he became involved in this suit, because he felt that it was wrong for his child to have to go so far a distance to receive a quality education. I remember my father as being a very strong man, a very family-oriented man, and this led him to become a part of the NAACP here in Topeka and become a part of the suit filed in behalf of his child because he believed that a child having to go so far to receive a quality education was wrong just because of the color of skin. And he was very, very determined that something was going to be done about this. I remember Monroe School, the all-black school that I attended, as being a very good school. Uh, as far as quality is concerned, uh, the teachers were very good teachers. They set very good examples for their students, and they expected no less of the student. I remember uh, the facility being a very nice facility, being very well kept. I remember the materials that we used being of good quality. Uh, as I said, this was not the issue of that time, quality education, but it was the distance that I had to go to acquire that education. I feel that after 30 years, looking back on Brown versus the Board of Education, it has made an impact in all facets of life for minorities throughout the land. I really think of it in terms of what it has done for our young people in taking away that feeling of second-class citizenship. I think it has made the dreams, hopes, and aspirations of our young people greater today. I think about what my father 
and what other parents did and what my family did as far as our part that we played in Brown versus Board of Education. And I feel that because what my father thought and because of what other parents throughout the land thought about their child having to live with the stigma of not having a choice and what they did has caused that stigma to be lifted. On the day the decision was handed down, I was attending school and my father was at work. My mother was at home doing the family ironing and she heard on the radio uh, the decision that had been handed down through the Supreme Court. I learned about it that evening uh, upon arriving home from school. I noticed that my mother was very overjoyed at something. And then when she shared the news with me, I felt a joy too because I felt that my sisters wouldn't have to walk so far to school the next fall. Uh, my father arrived home that evening and she relayed the message to him about what had happened and he was just, just overjoyed. Uh, there was joy throughout our family, throughout the home that evening. In fact, we gathered together and my father did in fact say thanks be unto God because he knew that this was the right thing that had happened and they had fought so hard for this. I remember the day that we walked over to Summoner School, the all-white school four blocks from our home. My father took me by the hand and we walked briskly over to the school. I remember going inside the building. Being a small child, the steps seemed large. The building seemed large. We walked inside. My father asked me to stay outside in the foyer and sit. He went inside with the principal and they talked, and as they talked, I remember their voices growing louder and louder, and I knew something was wrong. Uh, after a while, my father came out. He took me by the hand, and we be began to walk home. And as we walked home, I could feel tension within his body being transmitted to my hand. And I looked up at him, and I knew something was wrong. When we got home, he tried to explain to me that they turned me down and I would not be able to go to the school that my playmates went to because of the color of my skin. But being a young child, I didn't comprehend color of skin. I only knew that I wanted to go to Summoner School. At the time the suit was going on, the black teachers here in the school system did receive a letter from the Board of Education saying that, in fact, if the decision was handed down in favor of desegregation of schools, they may not have a job that coming fall because there were some black, uh, some white parents here in the city that were very concerned about their children being taught by black, ch by black teachers. And the teachers were very concerned that their livelihood would be in jeopardy if desegregation of schools came about. Well, as I said, I remember him being a a very strong person, uh, sort of a, a heavy set man uh, with very strong, determined looking eyes. I remember that about my father. And when he spoke, he had a voice that was very authoritative. Uh, I, rem I remember him looking like what I would, I would really consider a father to be like, a very strong, uh, powerful looking individual. I remember my father being what we called him, the Joe Lewis type. In fact, he did play in the uh, box in the Golden Gloves and he did win the championship here on the local level. Um, we had a picture of him in his uh, boxing gloves and uh, the picture did remind us of his idol, Joe Lewis, because he had that type of built and that, that type of stance and we called him our Joe Lewis. <laughs> 